the final video in this series, we're going to share a few tips on setting up. Before the patient comes into theatres and the anaesthetic room, the team can clean around the eye, in particular removing facial moisturising cream, which tends to stop the drapes sticking effectively. The usual recipe for topical anaesthetic is one drop in the operated eye, a drop in the contralateral eye, and then a second drop in the operated eye. It's useful to have a drop in the contralateral eye, keeps the patient comfortable during surgery and reduces the tendency for squeezing. Povidone iodine drops should go in in the anaesthetic room three or four minutes before the patient comes through to the theatre. This allows time for effective antisepsis. And light sedation and lots of reassurance, particularly helpful if the patient's at all anxious. Once you're into the theatres, it's good to position the table consistently with respect to the microscope. And I find that the front wheel of the table against the front wheel of the footplate of the microscope is very good. This makes sure that the footplate of the microscope is not interfering with your chair position. You're then looking at table height. And my own reference is the top of my iliac crest should be level with the patient's eye. And this makes sure that I can get my legs comfortably underneath the table to work the pedals. Then you're looking at head position and keeping the cheek and the brow level is very important. This puts the eye into the optimum position for topical anaesthetic with the eye right in the middle of the palpebral fissure. So lining up the cheek and the brow when you're positioning the patient's head actually prior to putting the drape on is very important. And so to maintain the optimum position during phaco surgery, it's always good to be conscious of the patient's head position. If you see the eye down underneath the lower lid, you want to ask the patient to put the chin down a little bit. Conversely, if the eye is up underneath the upper lid, it's chin up, please. If the eye is over in the lateral canthus, rotate your head gently towards me, please. And if it's over in the nose, uh, rotate gently away from me, please. All of this helps to keep the eye in the position of maximum visibility, right in the middle of the palpebral fissure. And if you sense that the head position is drifting out, never be afraid to stop and make the adjustment. It's time well spent. You also need to keep your hands light, floating and pivoting in the entry sites, and avoid the tendency to lift the eye over into the nose when you're fakoing. This is something I commonly see surgeons doing, and it works against maintaining this good position of maximum visibility with the eye right in the middle of the palpebral fissure, looking straight up to the microscope light. And maximum visibility equals maximum safety. If you want to help the patient look up to the microscope light comfortably under topical anaesthetic, it's important to keep the light levels low. Good visibility is much more about good focus and staying active with the left foot and the microscope pedal than about high light intensities. So keep the light levels low and keep the focus good. Other tips for comfort are to use some more topical anaesthetic just after you put the speculum in to help that circulate around the fornices. Again, stops irritation during the surgery. Ask the patient to look away from the light for 20 seconds or so when you first bring the microscope in to get them used to the light intensity. And also operating with the room lights at a low level helps the patient to have less dazzle. If you're getting any squeezing during surgery, the most important instruction to the patient is to keep both eyes open. And this is particularly important when you're putting the drape on, which can be one of the most difficult parts of the surgery under topical anaesthetic. There are lots of different styles, but a simple cut across to open up the drape, then one up and then one down works well for me. It usually results in a fairly tidy pin back once you've got the speculum in. But the most important point to emphasize about putting drapes on successfully is you need to constantly encourage the patient. This is often the moment when they're most nervous in the operation and an intense verbal massage can be very helpful. Have a look at this. Both eyes wide open, okay? Chin down, please. There, yeah, they're just relaxed. Yeah, that's good. Both eyes wide open. Open, open, open. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Try not to squeeze and blink. That's great. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Try not to squeeze and blink. That's good. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Try not to squeeze and blink. Nice and relaxed. And we're going to get a little clip in there just now. Look up to me. Look up to me. Just with your head still. Looking up to me. Right up to me. Look up here. Over the top of your head. Look up here. Up to the top. Up to the top. Up to the top. Up to the top. And then if you just look down to the floor now. We'll just pop that in the top there. It feels funny. 
Relax, 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 relax. Looking, you're squeezing away. That's it. Nice and relaxed. Okay, pretty good. Let's see that again, just putting a bit of tension in the drape, the thumb and the forefinger, a little nip in the side, then you can slide the scissors across rather than cutting. And then using the thumb to support there and just doing a little nip in the bottom. And then this time the finger from the left hand to support and a little nip in the top. And if ever you don't get a nice drape, simply discard the drape, get a new one out and start again. Okay, that more or less wraps it up. Just a few final tips, first of all, Keep your technique developing all through your career. Look at as many surgeons as you can on their videos and going to visit them and steal all the best bits of their technique for your own. Also do plenty of rehearsal outside the operating theatre, just the same way as famous sportsmen rehearse how they're taking a free kick. It's very helpful to lie down, close your eyes and think through every stage of an operation, particularly when you're on the learning curve. Use the simulators, do as much as you can to move your manual skills on so that when you get to the operating theatre and you're operating pilot and co-pilot, you're going to spend more time at the controls because you're going to be more confident. Take a moment to get comfortable before the start of every operation. It's very important to get the eyepieces in a good position so that you're operating with a straight back and a straight neck and not hunched down in front of the microscope. If you spend a 25 or 30 year career doing that, you'll end up with neck problems. So always get comfortable at the beginning of every operation. Operate in slow motion. You'll actually end up operating faster if you do this, if you make each move deliberate and always proceed with a clear strategy. Keeping your hands light, floating and pivoting in the entry sites. I can't emphasize that enough. That helps to keep the eye in the position of maximum visibility, stops problems with leakage from your paracentesis and iris prolapse, always floating in your entry sites. Keep your focus good. Keep the eye in the position of maximum visibility in the middle of the palpebral fissure and keep working the microscope pedal with your left foot to ensure that you always can see what you're doing. And finally, and perhaps most importantly of all, keep up a confident and happy dialogue with the patient. Avoid emotionally loaded words like tear, rupture, hemorrhage, that sort of thing when you're communicating with theatre staff. It's perfectly possible to say the same thing in coded language kinder words. And for the hard of hearing, shouting doesn't help. The best way to get through is to emphasise the consonants. The cat sat on the mat. Clear communication using the right language and a confident, positive atmosphere in theatres helps to keep the patient relaxed and helps the surgery to go smoothly. So with apologies to all the surgeons whose good ideas I've stolen for this video series, I'll sign off there. I hope there's something in this attempt to deconstruct cataract surgery that helps you to build a solid foundation for your own technique. You'll quickly develop your own preferences. And remember the adage, if you've got a stronger argument for doing what you're doing than what I'm showing you here, then it's me that should change. Good luck with your surgery and thanks for watching.